Hi everyone, it's late on Monday afternoon. I've um, done some traveling this week, had uh, a family death, um, and I'm still trying to get my feet back under me after getting home. Had a, an art club meeting today, and I wanted to show you what we did. This is really cool. We painted this very inexpensive um, uh, picture frame from Michaels in, in a base color, and then we used uh, Margot Clark's mud and my good friend and painting buddy Donna Harcourt taught it to us and I'm just really really pleased this this uh, medium is really fun to work with it's very it's quite easy um, Margot Clark is an artist and she sells it in kits and uh, here's uh, a kit w or some literature about her and I'm looking let's see uh, it would be margoclark.com is where you could get in touch with her to, to check out about this product and it comes in a kit with um, this, it's mud Let's see if I can get this open again <laughs> okay and um, it kind of looks a little bit like spackling but it has uh, crushed glass in it so it has a little bit of a sparkle anyway, and I put some um, some glitter on top of there. And it comes with uh, the mud, and it comes with uh, a kit where move this. I don't think it's dry. This kit, and it's got you know the pastry bag and the couplers, and all you do is just squeeze this out. And I'll leave you some information about that. And it comes with a brush and a bottle of medium. And you use very little of this at a time. So this uh, one kit would last you for a really long time. So uh, I'm going to put this over to the side for a few minutes. But I just wanted to kind of show that. And uh, Donna Harcourt taught a really fun class th today with this. So... Um, Okay, so I don't know, some of you that maybe painted back in the, the 70s and 80s might remember that there was, it was, what was popular was some candy uh, cookie jars and they sit on the side and then you could paint the wooden lid. Well, we have uh, a store, uh, you know, we have about 30 of these little uh, cookie jars, but no lids. So I brought one home and I thought that I would experiment with our again with the chalky finish paint so again I've got the whisper which is the off-white and I'm going to try and open this as well okay and I'm going to use my wax palette again and I'm going to pour a little bit out remember you don't need a whole lot and I want to tint it and you know last week we established that you can tint with the, the uh, Deco Arts Traditions paint and I'm going to use uh, medium red rose because I want to make a peach color because I'm thinking you know you could use these in your bathrooms you could put some shells in them and some sand or you could use them in a baby's room to put some cotton balls and things so I thought I would just start, you know, experimenting and take you guys along for the ride. So I'm mixing just a very little bit of that medium red rose. And I'm coming out with a nice peach color. It's a little bit um, darker peach than I was really kind of planning on, so I needed to use uh, less of that, that color, that's of my medium rose, but I think what I'm going to do instead of getting more chalky paint, which I don't need, I'm going to add a little bit of white to this color as soon as I find where I put it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add some titanium white and see if I can lighten this color back up a little bit. So I put quite a bit in there. It's always easier to darken than, than to lighten, so you want to 
uh, learn from that mistake and, that I made and start with less paint, less color, pigmenting color, and work your way through. So okay, that did lighten it up just a little bit, and but I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit more in it. No, kind of a lot more in it. <laughs> So, I, you know, I use quite a bit of that medium red rose, maybe about uh, two chocolate chip sizes. So, you want to start out with less than one chocolate chip size. This is getting to be more of the color I was envisioning. This is about a value nine, eight or nine. Okay. So, I'm going to uh, grab my Traditions One Inch Flat. I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush because you want to start out with a damp brush. And then I'm just going to paint the outside of this jar. Now I can tell already that I'm going to need more than one coat. Because, you know, I'm, I'm going to want this to be opaque. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. put it on there. Seems like I've got really got home decor on my mind lately. Okay. So I got it on there. I'm not gonna do the lip of it. I'm gonna come right up to right up to the lip. Okay, now I'm going to um, dry this with my heat gun. You can dry glass with your heat gun. Okay, yeah, you can dry glass with your heat gun. Um, oops, that part is not dry yet. Uh, you just want to be careful not to hold it too close. Let me catch this piece right here. The most important thing to remember about painting on glass and needing to paint more than one layer is that you have to have the first layer completely dry before you put on the next layer or else it's going to lift both layers off. So I think I'm pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on. And we're getting much closer to the opaqueness that I want. Okay, so uh, this is dry now. But I'm going to set it aside just for a minute or two because I have another one here. And while I was doing this video, I started, uh, my mind kind of started taking off in a couple of different directions. Okay, so I had an idea uh, while I was drying this about the DecoArt Texture Crackle. And you can paint this texture. So I want to spread this on my other glass article that I have and I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to spread this on dry. Now I'm going to do this entire uh, piece of glass. I'm going to do this entire candy jar like this. But for uh, the video's sake, I'm going to stop right here on this side and I'm going to let it dry while we're still working on the our other piece.
Okay, so I'm going to set this off. And let's go back here and let's put that third coat on. And I'm really starting to get the nice um, thick op opaqueness that I was envisioning with this third coat. Turn it around in my hand. And I have made sure that each coat is completely dry before I put on another one. I get it up here correctly. Okay. And again, I'm going to let that dry, or I'm going to dry it. Okay. So I've uh, kind of set this off to the side. I dried it a little bit with my heat gun and then set it off to the side. And so then I dried our uh, texture crackle. Uh, Normally I would just wait for it, but you know I wanted to hurry up and get this in for you, and I didn't want this other paint to dry. So I've still got a little bit of paint here, right? I'm going to wet my brush just a little, and I'm going to pick up some of this paint. I'm going to get it, I can get it off of my uh, palette knife as well, and I'm going to paint right over top of this texture, this texture crackle. So here we have a whole different idea. Now, I kind of like what's happening here, where I, whoop, now that, that I didn't like because I didn't get it all the way dry. <laughs> but, um, if you notice in here, I'm just kind of uh, swiping my brush across there without really digging it into the cracks, and so I have the peach color and I have the white color as well, and I like that. I, I wonder if I can repair this, but I really, yeah, that's going to work fine. There we go. Uh, you know, I'm really kind of in love with this chalk paint, and I like mixing it with the traditions to get whatever color I want to get. And now I'm using the Deco Art Texture um, Mediums, the Texture Crackle. And all of these things work together to give you some really fun ideas. So, so you know, you can have you know, a smooth item, or you can have crackle. Now I can mix more paint and when this is dry and go over this and remove some of that white, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm going to leave that there. 